We're good. Right? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so how's everybody doing really? Yeah. All right, so that's, that's a little bit more what I expect at the end of the night. I mean, it's lift bait, right? You've been doing the whole lick crawl and crawling from spot to spot, and then this is the last, this is the last spot, right? So yeah. after this is an after party, so you're supposed to be like hell excited, right? <laughs> This is a mission manifesto made redux, we will reprise, reuse, smash on under echelon of epitaphs, make murals. They tore down on your spinning patrol on a smokestack colored morning and the children were off to school. There was a bell teacher for members, antithetic anthems over antithetic rubrics, and better still, the children come on foot with infantile arrogance. They come with tablets and with pencils, empty baskets built for hesitation, built for limbs that stout with light and concrete wound. Replace the wounds of mother's lungs, exquisite time on tongues, cut taken, this ephemera that shimmers on the glassy eyes of children. Running raging into no one's dying light, beyond the clasping of their lashes, shutting out the flowing visions of shared bedrooms and a dusty kitchen table. And these they will not sacrifice as lids grip tighter over memory in place, displaced the new beginnings of old endings when the stop and go days last longer than the curses shattered mirrors. Like the dreams reflected of themselves retreating into multiplicity, made history of hunger, and invisible arms locked into a barely felt embrace, a face that time will never know, seeking over ever present mouths from last night's eviction, cast off by many mourners, holding hands, maintaining ranks, solidified by silence. And some days the children reach out in paper white shirt sleeves trailing blue bandera uniforms through cancer causing grief. So many kites without tails, singana de volada, merging wings already clipped become the fall of western Walmarts ridden by the complex schemes of 99 cent shopping on the lowlands of our highbrow culture. This is our mission manifesto made redux. We will reprise, reuse, smash on the under echelon of epitaphs made murals. Our mission street at noon between the traffic cones and overdue construction beyond the silence of a bus bench. Girls go pushing, pushing into sweaty days, hablando tres generaciones, rocking a faded Chivas jersey. The markers more the milestones move so far from making sense because she cannot speak the language. She just looks with rage, embedded within the inability to look, to sing the song and the psalms of looking at ourselves. When equal measure, we find Buddha and Richie Valens. We call them scars because we've been tongue lashed through the ages, and the first words become an epilogue forbidden from the dialogue. We marinate on tax breaks, watching weary arms tow children towards September when school begins and language becomes pretense, disaggregate, delusion, just a satchel we keep tugging through television windows like linguistic thieves at night ready to pocket the silver and render English unto Caesar. We were born with the sun in our mouths, become a hummingbird swarm pinned to the collar of an unwashed shirt just like the notes sent home from teacher bearing the standards. Like illuminated manuscripts, kids read only the pictures, ringing palabras from soaking garments, straight whitewash on the translation, but hanging on the lines we fail, only the children. And isn't it all just so familiar? How even their silence has a vibration, how rhetoric subsides, and in the interim we'll pause and hold our breath across millennia. On thousand one, on thousand two. I um, wrote that piece because I was a teacher not so far from here, just a few blocks away on Folsom and 22nd, 23rd, at Sessa Chavez Elementary. And um, the school is beautiful from the outside. It's two story here on Sessa Chavez. And uh, what we recognize as teachers within the district and, and trying to educate the young people in that school was that you know, the school was getting all this praise for the murals that adorned its walls without like, really offering the, the, the amount of support that was required to support a community that, to the the families and the children that breathe life into that institution. And at one point during the rainy season, which is I like all year here, I think, I don't know, I'm a Southern California kid, so like when I came here it rained like, I don't know, six months straight, something like that. At, the, <laughs> at one point, the, um, the, the plaster cracked right underneath Cesar's eye, right? And it fell off and there was this big blank spot in the mural and all of us that, you know, read signs and these kinds of things were just like, oh no, Cesar's crying. We need to do something to fix the school. And so but that was my contribution to try to document the, the young people that were coming into my classroom 
and we're being challenged with, you know, learn English in 180 days or else that's your ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 180 days is not enough, right? The school year is not enough. But, um, yeah, so the, that, that was my contribution to, uh, I don't know, helping those little kids that I used to work with. Now I work with older kids, they're kind of knuckleheads, but they're, um, <laughs> But they're, they're far too talented to ignore. I run a small organization called Arts Change out in Richmond, California. And uh, yeah, it's, it's across Richmond here, you know, and everyone's like, ooh, Richmond, oh my god, you know. But um, really, really, it's, it's an honor to work with young people, so we need to remember to celebrate that as we make our rounds, you know, celebrating poetry and words. Remember that the voices of the next generation are still out there waiting to be born, right? right. So let me get off the soapbox and get to my second poem, because they only gave me eight minutes. And I respect that, so I want to stay within my eight minute time frame. I'm in a two minute drill right now, I think. So this poem is called uh, Cuando Ganamos. And let me tell you the story just because I like to tell the story. So I was telling you about the rainy season that I had never experienced before, being that I grew up in San Diego. You know, it's like, it rains like twice a year there. It's usually planned around, that's on the calendar. I think we buy it, crack the cellophane, it's like, all oh, right, January 14th, you know, don't plan any barbecues. But when I arrived in San Francisco, you know, it was like literally raining from, I don't want to say the dates, but it rained no less than 19 days in a row. It's no exaggeration. And um, I happened to work right across the street from the school that I was living and working at. And so my day consisted of, you know, getting up, going across the street to school, and then running home. Because, you know, growing up in the sunshine, you're taught that, like, you're not supposed to be out in the rain. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what are you doing out in the rain? So. I soaked in my apartment for those damn near three weeks, and then I, I started to um, feel this sort of sense of loss from my, my, my transplant from Southern California to Northern California. And when I finally made my, my, got the courage to go out and make my rounds in, in the Mission District and recognize the sort of the, the immigrant diaspora that is this community, I started to recognize how many other transplants there were, and, and this is my, doc, my uh, I don't know, my tribute to them. It's Guadalupe Ganamos. Shadows of a new for real fall 60 stories of an antique or apartments where Victoria runs crooked under late Victorians. Dipping from the sloping sun, making room for undone renovations, and the sprawl of a new street maintaining life above its own. See, this is your town, it's my town, it's any town, USA. There's no new here, no viable, no cradle of the crescent, only after school unrest, a room of peace without the decency of truth telling we, armed only with obsessions for silence of a waving hand, say, get your hands up, get your hands in the air. We can't stop the double dip parlays at the corner stores where the homies chill in lawn chairs, the unknown warriors that lean unsteadily against the mural of their own fifth son. As if we'd need a reason to subdue the urges of our exodus, the exegesis filling on the sidewalks where the old gods are remembered and you just can't step there. What? This step through telepathic logic and the passing of a paper bag where we spit 40 ounce foam and roll up on the unsuspecting destiny of power lines and patrol cars that were clocking as the world had shrunk to this. From the moment we left dreaming, Left with leery salmon sleeping on street corner stoops, a stoop too low, enduring the weight of an everyday absolution. So in the poem, we must name the hottest corners that we've been to. This, the willing traces of our pins across the pavement. Corners leaning against the lamppost where the mountains carry on the markers and artilleries of old strategic planning and the myths that our good citizens have taken their goodwill toward our center. We find Socrates holding a vial at 24th and Mission where the mangoes drip from traffic lights, grown weary in the haze of gray Saturdays and pulsing cars line up to start the plucking at the intersection. But those on foot, Surveying so many rows of luggage racks that line the sidewalks for a population bent on traveling home, always departing as they arrive in ten dollar double bags with pockets lined with telejitos and lotto tickets scratching for the chances every turn. A una isla encantada, una montaña en Centro America, a un rancho lindo y lejos de ese pueblo congelado. Unreachable, those mangoes to the traffic lights of civic sympathy. A shame allowed the frozen fruit to fall at 24th Street. We would die within the skin and pulp before they even hit the pavement. Beyond the fleshy fiber strands, the meat beyond original confusion, we would fight to find a pit of fruitless searches for beginnings. The fruit's not gonna fall, and sympathetic poets don't fertilize fools, so you better start growing some trees. So get a mango, vamos a chinito way. So we hit the spot and pop the top, our neck just coming cans like the essence that is us says chilling in the coins at Chinito's corner store, where old drugs slanted sideways on a $50 million jackpot dream, play lotto and complain about la renta. 
They'll take their crumpled tickets home tonight, their numbers plucked for memories and shame. Tonight, someone behind a TV tray within a damp apartment will tune in to anticipate the call of birth dates or children's ages, the day since their arrival, a street address, a fake social security number, a saint's day, a biblical passage, one year when they were happy, but even those will not appear, will not deliver out their random race through time toward the going back to leave them quietly meeting in the dark. Bueno, mano. Bueno, ganamos. Te compro manos. Damn that, bro. If we win, I'm buying you the main.